sound lines and election glitches as if they're natural events. Yes. It's like a rainstorm. Oh, the, 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 the computer broke down and there's not enough ballots. It, it, it's just like the sun coming up in the morning. It's something that just kind of happens. When we saw, when Bob and I saw the long lines in Maricopa County, it was Franklin County again in Ohio, 2004. The precinct where I grew up in Franklin County, Ohio, which is now predominantly black, they had to wait five hours to vote. And the media said, oh, well, you know, they had to wait five hours to vote. We know why they had to wait five hours to vote, because they're black. And in Maricopa County, why did they have to wait five hours to vote? Because they're Hispanic. This is part of the process now, and it's part that we cannot tolerate because it is, a, it is destroying any semblance of democracy that this country might presume to have. Officially in Ohio, Obama had nothing to do with the CICJ. Unofficially, when we found 1.25 million voters urged, they uh, literally moved a former lawyer, he resigned as the Obama lawyer in Newark, Ohio, and moved into my house to go through the ballots and regularly uh, uh, met. So, I mean, uh, there's a certain level of sophistication on this. In 2012, when we found, uh, some of you may, we broke this story, that uh, the Romney family's uh, fund had invested in hard inner civic and former executives of Bainco uh, had helped buy the machine right after he announced for the president. And he got a good buy on it because there were 12 areas of com uh, computer security and they were zero for 12, right? No isolation procedures. So when that happened, there were 60,000 people on change.org uh, and they literally sent in a FBI cyber squad. Another thing that was happening, and uh, Greg Palace uh, was reporting on this regularly, uh, in an area called Driving Park, a huge urban area where they consolidated uh, all of the voting precincts to save money, but really to create big lines, uh, there were 200, every black male uh, that was under 40 years was told to vote provisionally. Uh, I was standing there uh, observing uh, with the Green Party and they kept pushing them in the line and they kept saying but I'm in the book <laughs> now I can see that and they wouldn't let him go there so I stood up and said look what you're doing is criminal and violated the the code of an observer I said you need to go to jail you need to stop yeah. doing this when I said that a woman stepped forward and said I'm with the Justice Department we need to you know straighten this out and they called in somebody from the Board of Election and they quit forcing them to vote provisionally. So you had the FBI in John Houston's office, which I believe, and Mary Beth and Jim were here. Do you remember Carl Rove on yes. TV yes. kept saying, yes. waiting for the, yes. wait for the numbers to come yes. up from Ohio? It's Houston. They had put custom patches, which is another story we broke. Experimental patches, which under law are supposed to be in one precinct. <laughs> In one county, they put them, they tried to put them on 44 counties. They succeeded in 30. There was a Republican whistleblower in the Secretary of State's office that leaked that information, right? And we sued in court in 27, 2012. On the day of the election, I went into federal court early in the morning as the plaintiff with Cliff Harnebeck, and we were told to kiss off. You now the federal judge said, who had been appointed by Bush, is that Michael Donahoe, who had been 37 years with the NSA and is now going libertarian, said, look, you don't need these custom patches. You can download stuff for free. They threw it out. We went to state court, and Judge Surratt said, I'm familiar with Bob's work. I'm familiar with the free press. And in fact, we're keeping the case open until the numbers come in. We'll keep this open for 30 days for certification. But really, I think Carl Rove thought he could do it again. And John Houston chick chickened out on those E, S, and S, because yeah. that's who uh, put those custom patches on. It's very personal when you say, why isn't this stuff, if this stuff is going on, like the racial profiling and removing voters, why isn't it in, why haven't you seen it in the mainstream press? <laughs> well, because you're not watching the mainstream number one TV station in the world, BBC, 
or reading the number one English language paper in the world, The Guardian, because it doesn't come here. So for example, this business here where it says next to the voter's name, BLA for black, when when Catherine Harris and under Jeb Bush's orders, by the way, right. yeah, right. removed, ordered the removal of black voters from the voter rolls before the 2000 election, his brother won by 537 votes, so they removed 56,000 black people from the voter rolls, illegally. It was covered. It was page one of The Guardian. It was the top of the nightly news all over the world, except for the United States where it was on page zero, okay? <laughs> And I couldn't get this story on anywhere. And when, except Dan Rather's people called me, okay, and said, uh, Dan Rather's people, yeah, CBS, yep. called me and said, we'd like to pick up this story. Uh, give us something else about it. And I had evidence that um, Jeb Bush had ordered the purge. He said that there's a document. I said, call them. You can, here's how you get the document, the proof. And they didn't run the story. And I called them a week later and said, my God, the count's still going on. Why aren't you running the story? I'm giving you my story, you know, a new piece of the story. And they said, well, your story doesn't stand up. I said, why? What do you mean my story doesn't stand up? Okay, what happened? What do you know? And they said, well, we called Jeb Bush's office, and he said it wasn't true. So they didn't even report it. Okay? And this cross-check story, what I just told you about, with a million people, at risk, okay? They did have it on Fox, saying a million people were voting twice. Donald Trump repeated it, okay? But to, to say that this was in fact flushing out a million innocent people, we don't have a million people voting twice. They were arrested three people nationwide with a list of seven million, all right? Now, where was it? Oh, it was, it's been reported. It's been reported. It was reported on Al Jazeera America. That's where I got it. And, when, and I was, by the way, disqualified for a Pulitzer Prize because it was a foreign agent's um, oh, enterprise. So is Fox So News. wait, but listen. So, so wait, so I'm on terrorist TV. That's the only place I'll take the story, right? And now Rolling Stone will take it, right? And they'll say, okay, it's rock and roll. It's somewhere under, you know, uh, Neil Young's obituary or something. I, thought I, I wish him the best of health. He's a friend. Uh, but the, <laughs> all right, now, um, but... So you don't get the news. And I know it's, 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 it's difficult because we say, this should be, someone should want to report this story. This is why I'm in exile as a reporter. I lived, I had to live abroad. My kids had these stupid upstairs, downstairs accents. I want them to be Americans. I've come back to write for Rock and Roll Magazine. Okay, anything to get it out. Skywriting if I have to. That's why I'm asking people to help me out. By the way, you give 100 bucks to GregPowles.com or anyone, in fact, to the group. CI, by the way, this man has donated $1,000 to become a co-producer on the film. Thank you, Bob. This is the point. This American media is making you stupid deliberately. <laughs> Stupidity has become a profit center in the American media, right? And you see it. And now, and now they're shocked that they've been screwing you so long that somehow we got pregnant with this guy with orange hair. That's right. Okay? And it's shocking them. Okay, so all I'm saying is there's Chris, <laughs> there's Chris Lee. Please join me if you have any talents, if you have any uh, funds, whatever. We need that to get around this mainstream media so what I can put on the national nightly news all over this world can finally come home yep. to where I live. I'm still in America. I'm not going to give it up. Thank you. Uh, one of the great injustices, uh, the people who did a lot of the... Uh, uh, re-registering of votes was, of course, ACORN, because they were yeah. one of the few groups that went into the uh, inner city. Yeah. And I believed uh, that they were uh, targeted uh, because uh, of what they did in 08. But the other thing you asked, I think, right at the beginning, what we used to call the red shift, which really was originally the Bush family shift. You know? It started with George Herbert Walker and with, went to his son. So the former CIA director, which a lot of people get abroad, you know, and his son saw this unexplained shift. You're seeing the same shift if you superimposed it in uh, Hillary Clinton's races. Uh, and it's even, it's even more pronounced. And I'm not saying Hillary's doing. I have no proof of that. And my suspicion, I don't know what other people think, but I really would look to ES and S, you know, the Omaha Hall World Herald and people associated with that that are very
pro-corporate capitalist, and I think probably fear dramatically uh, Bernie uh, Sanders. And but, they bought Diebold, by the way. Uh, they did, right. Yeah. Uh, ESNS, right? Uh, Diebold was so corrupt. Remember Wally O'Dell, the guy who ran it, sent the letter out promising to deliver the electoral vote. He'd been a donor, a ranger. He'd raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then their company got nailed for worldwide corruption. Right, right. And what did they do is ESNS bought up, uh, which yeah, includes yeah, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, uh, the question is being that we, we don't know exactly. All I know is that Obama does not speak openly about what he knows is going on. Uh, all I know is that when a lot of people demanded the Justice Department coming in Ohio, they did. When a lot of people don't say shit or demand that Bernie Sanders quit being ripped off, uh, unless there's some outpouring, and there should be, there should be a petition with hundreds of thousands of people say quit stealing our votes. Yes. Unless that happens, the Justice Department isn't going to do anything. I want to. Uh, do you want to do justice? Just quickly. Yeah, okay. Justice. So I want to say uh, first of all, I have uh, interfaced with the De Department of Justice on a couple of cases. It's tough for them too, and they still have a problem. You go in there, and guess what? They've erased all the memory cards. The auto logs are gone. They can't. They, they. There are places where they know. They don't always send their top people there. Um, the other thing is, and this is important to remember, to get an election case to the Department of Justice. You basically need one of two things, wire fraud, which computer fraud can be, or a racial injustice, because they can't come in, they don't have jurisdiction on an election unless they've got those one of those two compound points. That's exactly right. Because we don't have a, a federal right to vote. It's 50 states get to make right. election law, so you have to have compromised somebody racially or with wire fraud because of the U.S. mails. Uh, otherwise, it's not a federal case. The other aspect of the Justice Department is during the eight years of Bush, it was, and prior to that, the judicial system of this country was stuffed full of right wing ideologue judges because of abortion. And it was a moral crusade that fired up a lot of people, many of them my neighbors, and they were the only people that felt they had a moral motive for voting in the whole United States because the Democratic Party was busy with the DLC getting the money and the power and they forgot entirely about people, health care, not having perpetual war. So the right wing <laughs> built a base on this moral passion for sacredness of life, something you know Native Americans would talk to you Except about. Except when it comes to war. That, right. Well, what, well, once you're born, you can be killed. <laughs> and, and according to, but anyway, they filled the Justice Department with operatives, and a guy named David Margulies is still there. He's in the way of Don Siegelman's whole problem. As you know, David Iglesias in, was it Arizona or New Mexico? New Mexico. New Mexico was going to be fired because he, as a U.S. attorney, wasn't saying there was voter fraud on the part of illegal aliens. And he wouldn't do it. But they were trying to use the ethnicity part of it, make it a federal matter, have these U.S. attorneys suddenly say voter fraud so it could hide the election fraud that the Justice Department still will not look into. But what's promising about Bev's discovery is we're going to talk about fraud capacity for now and say it's there, it was planned. I don't have to need to prove nothing after that. Just get rid of that. And the Justice Department, screw it. You can do whatever you want to, and they have been good. Um, and trying to get in there, Holder v. Shelby County, the other Shelby County in Alabama, and they still lost. And the Supreme Court, when it was 5-4 Scalia, said we're post-racial, you don't have to pre-review your racist election laws anymore. And we lost that case. Now it's 4-4, but we're a long way right now, or maybe it'll happen overnight, from prosecuting anyone or anything because they're using the fraction magic program to weight the voters when they find out, yeah, we would find racist weighting of the old three-fifths law, I'm sure. And, and uh, one other thing is that the Right to Life movement counted the votes in Ohio in 2004. The Rapp family, the leading donors to Right to Life, according to Reverend John Coates, who runs it, 
have a company, and, and that company, Triad, does the majority of the maintenance and did, in fact, the electronic poll books wow. all over the state. And Michael Connell, who died tragically yeah. in, in, in an accident, uh, set up the entire system that outsourced the vote count to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Jeff Averbeck of Smart Tech, a former evangelical right-wing minister who ran a publishing house on servers connected directly to the White House. Uh, uh, George G. Uh, uh, WB43, the one used by Karl Rove, and the Swift Voters for Truth helped count the vote and send it back to Ohio. So the Right to Life movement got very excited and went into counting votes as private companies in 2004. And Triad actually has proliferated uh, in the state and has had major mess ups in 2012 and 2016. That's why they're freaked about Trump, because... Can we have the next question? Yes, yeah. yeah. uh, you guys who are standing, if you want the next question, you can, you can take chairs, I hate to see you standing, but like, you're waiting to invite them. Take the next question. Before, next question. before my question, I wanted to say the person before asked about Democrats and election fraud. In LA is the biggest county in the country, and when we got 200 people out, uh, for the 2008 election, we found a lot of fraud. We found trucks full of fake ballots. We found a lot of voters turned away at the polls and given provisional ballots, told they were voting by mail, and vote by mail ballots were counted in some names. So, and this is a Democratic county, and we took this to every elected official. We took it to the head of the Democratic Party, and they shut it up, and only the Secretary of State had any interest and arrested one person. So Democrats do it just like Republicans do it right here oh, at yeah. home. Deborah Bowen? But that's, no, Deborah Bowen was arrested one guy. Use the microphone. Deborah Bowen was the only person who listened to us, and Bev Harris listened to us. Other than that, nobody wanted to hear it. But my question was this. I heard that the consortium is not, is cutting off all exit polling for California. Yeah, right. And I wanted right. someone to address that. What do we do? And that they're going to announce the winner at 5 p.m. So you all understand, exit polling is the gold standard for any kind of monitoring that we have on an electronic election. It's the only way in Germany, and I got to say, by the way, we were assaulted, Bob and I, for saying this by Josh Holland at The Nation magazine. We can complain about the, the lamestream media. We get attacked on the left. And I, told, I pointed out to Josh Holland that in Germany, the election polls, the exit polls, are accurate within 1%. Because in Germany, they have paper ballots. And they don't adjust the exit polls. They have the paper ballots. And they have the exit polls. And they're always within 1%. And Josh Holland said, well, what relevance does that have to the United States? Unfortunately, it doesn't have any because we totally fuck with the election polls. So, um, the, but your question is good, and Bob, you want to you want to state? Go ahead. What we're going to do? Well, here's here's part of the problem. They canceled uh, the exit polls in all the remaining primaries, and it may have something to do with the fact that two weeks ago, uh, Cliff Arnabak, uh, the attorney, and I was the expert witness, sent hold notices to all the media consortium and announced that we were planning a RICO suit and that they should hold all their uh, documents because we feel that they had, in fact, uh, it was based on uh, on the 11 elections uh, that were significantly, not just 24 out of 26 went to Hillary, but so far out of line that they were statistically impossible. So uh, it happened right after that. Let me explain really quickly. Uh, well, here's, here's well, there will be election uh, polls. In fact, Lori Grace uh, has just hired uh, a professional exit poller. They'll primarily be in the north of the state. Also, two other things. There'll be citizens' exit polls. One of the reasons I came out here will happen, particularly in the L.A. area and in part of the L.A. area, as well as San Diego and in the north. There'll be a new app, an open source app from a group called Democracy Counts that will be beta tested and all the results of that will be put up 
publicly on open sites and anyone can examine the code. So that is in fact happening. Uh, and if you go to uh, trustvote.org, uh, you can sign up to volunteer for any of those things. Exit polls are paid for by a consortium, usually the six major media operations. And they've hired Edison Matovsky and other major firms to do exit polling, which is considered the gold standard for checking up on elections. However, the tradition in the United States is when the exit polls don't agree with the official results, they change the exit polls. So one of the people we work with, Steve Freeman, a, a statistician, called Warren Matovsky, who is the founder of the, the Edison Matovsky polling operation, and asked him for the raw, unadulterated data for an election so we could check. And I, 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 if you take offense, I'm sorry. At Mato at Warren Matovsky's response to Steve Freeman's request for unadulterated exit poll data was, and I quote, go fuck yourself. That is a direct quote from what Warren Matowski told Steve Freeman trying to get unadulterated exit polls. So we do not have that luxury in the United States, and it's absolutely essential to do what you're doing. We are saying the right words now. It's election fraud. It's not you people. It's not voter fraud. And that is where we're making a leap. My big concern is how much time do we have left before it's really too late? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This election is right. Can I ask my question? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. I don't know if a lot of people are aware, but there's an initiative that got approved by the Secretary of State's Office for California uh, to change. There's a lot of money behind it. It's 47 pages long. It was written by an expensive law firm in Sacramento. Nobody knows who's behind it. And it was written by an expensive law firm, and it's been approved. It's probably out for signatures now. And it's to convert California's election system, the complete system from top to bottom, into electronic voting, online voting. And under the guise, under the guise of electronic voting is secure and, and safe. Now, I haven't seen anybody collecting signatures signatures for this yet but it's horrendous we have a we have a part in the california code that prevents any part of the election system from being online connected to the internet this takes away that section of the code and it's really bad my last question is for you you talk you, you answered most of what i asked you before but on the triad thing with with sending the the calculations over to, to kentucky is there a paper trail for that yeah, yes, and it's a very good question. I hadn't realized Peter B. Collins didn't read all my stuff for five straight years, just, just for three or four. But in the King Lincoln Brunsville case, uh, in I had a, in, in Ohio, right, and that's the 1983, that was a black inner city group that, that was suing, uh, and the case was in 2006. And the big triumph of the case, and Harvey will tell you, is all 88 counties were forced to give us the ballot to count. And luckily, only 56 accidentally destroyed them. Uh, in Youngstown, Ohio, they, uh, waste management, which has an interesting provenance with, uh, with organized crime, somehow got in the voter vault and, and accidentally recycled all the ballot. In Holmes County, where there were 20,000 Amish, someone made a big craft of coffee, got both keys, the Dems and the Republican, and it fell and wrecked all 20,000 ballots. But the key thing that came out of that case was we found the architectural map. Right. Somebody went into my office at Columbus State, which I learned this from Greg Pallas, is all you gotta do is let them know you'll be willing to print it. Uh, I leave the door open, I come in, there's a map there, and it shows the vote going directly from the Secretary of State's yep. office to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and essentially they, uh, it was the man in the middle. In fact, Steve Spoonamore online, who is a Republican, and you know, worked for John McCain, uh, you know, went public with this and, and said, look, they could alter the vote. But if you go to freepress.org and put in architectural map, you'll, you can get the map, click on it, it's in color, you can see exactly how they did it, and the contract is also at freepress.org. The documentation that both 
Greg Palast and I'm forgetting her name, but Matt Harris, Harris right. has, uh, have done uh, showing that the disenfranchisement has happened specifically, has targeted black people. Uh, would Have you tried going to Oprah? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, she's actually not a bad idea. No. That isn't a bad idea to um, target the black press at this stage, especially because the wonderful gentleman who broke open Fraction Magic is black. It so seems he's a, a very compelling uh, personality. In fact, I'd almost rather see him be the guy that gets into black people. Well, it There's very little coverage, as you know, of issues involving racism in America, period. So this is just a subset. It was very difficult to discuss racial vote suppression uh, because it's just, it, it is ignored. So for example, the guy that put together this cross-check program is this right-wing nativist, Chris Kobach. He's the Catherine Harris of 2016. He's the Secretary of State of Kansas. Now, he is the one who wrote SB 1070. He wrote the prove you're a citizen before you can register legislation. Clearly racist in its intent. I mean, it sounds right to you. We all ought to have, um, we all ought to be citizens to vote. But go ahead, prove you're, prove you're a citizen if you don't have a passport. Okay, so now, <laughs> it's classist and racist. The New York Times did not cover that story until they found out that it was university students, even more than Hispanics, who are hurt by the need to prove that they are citizens because they don't know where their original birth certificate is. They haven't come back from the trip to the Alps with their passport. So how do they prove they're a citizen? So when it became an issue of white students losing their vote, suddenly it was page one of the New York Times. Okay. And and when but when it was African Americans and when it was or Hispanics losing their vote, when I try to get these stories out, it's a it's like yeah they'll take me to the black press like Amsterdam News or something. This is the problem. And so actually I've been working a lot with African American churches directly because you've got to communicate through their own systems because the, the, the uh, mainstream press, the white press, won't cover non-white issues unless it suddenly hits their kids. or unless, they're, unless white people are collateral damage, I can't get the story out. So it's very, very difficult. But thank you for bringing this up. And if anyone does have Oprah's phone number, say, hey. Yeah. Great ballast, Bev, and the rest of the game will help you out. She's actually looking for publicity because she's yeah. in a Huffington Post every day. Well, I mean, the problem is reaching people. One of the problems is for me, I've just come back, and I'm, that's why I'm here in Hollywood, frankly, to some extent, is because I've been in exile, literally, as in Britain. And so my work is exiled. And I would like to make the connections to try to get back, and I'm hoping with Rolling Stone and other things I could do that, but it's very important. It's very difficult, and um, I will say that, you know, it's just hard to get. I would love if anyone knows Oprah or anyone else that could help get our word out. The celebrity factor is important. We've got iced tea on our in our film, and Rosario Dawson, and but you know what can we do? Rosario could probably get to him. Yes. What's the name of your film? Okay. Oh, the name of the film that I make is based on my best seller. It's called "The Best Democracy Money Can Buy: A Tale of Billionaires and Ballot Bandits." And this young lady here, by the way, is one of my producers. <laughs> Science and math are at stake here, and very few actresses or Elected officials understand math, so they trust, like they trust a doctor when they go in for surgery. Put you right out, when you wake up in four hours, we'll have made things better inside your body. We gotta trust, and that same trust is going into these machines. No one knows their provenance, except those of you who have heard Bob Petrakis and Beth today. When you look at what this really was, and it was planned, you freak out. So fraud capacity, it's there. And the reason nobody's done anything is math fear, not wanting to seem paranoid, you name it. Second, but even more important, the Democrats are dirty. Okay. The Democrats have been deeply involved in vote manipulation. Let's not forget that Jim Crow was created by the Democratic Party and just was adopted with, by Nixon's Southern strategy. So we have a big problem. I was with David Iglesias, the U.S. federal prosecutor in New Mexico. I was the guy who broke the story that he was fired because he refused to fake evidence that there was voter fraud. 
Now, when I went with the Glacius, we went to actually a, the Acoma Indian Pueblo, the, the Pueblo in, in uh, New Mexico. And there, 200 uh, American natives were uh, given provisional ballots. They said, we didn't like your address. Okay? They're given provisional ballots, then their ballots were thrown out because they used the wrong envelope to put their ballots in. The envelopes that were given them by the officials. The officials, almost every American native, is a Democrat. They're the most solid Democrat, Democratic demographic out there. Who stole their votes? The Democratic Party. Why? Because the Democratic Party or local party was all mobbed up with people trying to put in a uranium mine. All politics is local, and I, here's the important thing that I've found. All vote theft is local. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Kings yeah. County, Kings County, which is Brooklyn, New York. People wondering what happened there. Okay? The answer is I used to work with the Kings County Democratic machine. I was a political appointee many years ago. And we went down into those offices, purging people from the voter rolls. Okay? The other guy who was very good at that was uh, the state senator from the south side of Chicago. And, and I was uh, in his district, uh, Barack Obama. He was very good at removing black voters from the voter rolls. Very good. And um, so the problem is, is that the Democratic Party itself is dirty with this stuff. And part of it is that these incumbents, if you were to change the electorate, and this I just spoke to Santiago Juarez of LULAC, the Hispanic organization in New Mexico. He said, look, and we, I did an investigation. The big vote, the biggest case of vote suppression I have yet found in the United States was Hispanic Democrats suppressing the Hispanic Democratic vote. Why? Why did Bill Richardson steal the vote of other Hispanics? Because Bill Richardson is a rich white Hispanic, and God forbid the poor, poor Hispanics, poor Mexicanos, would be allowed to vote. He wouldn't be nominated. So it's it's Democrats protecting the the, the status quo Democrats protecting themselves in the primaries end up screwing the same people that the Republicans screw. So when you have Democratic Party vote suppression or Republican Party vote suppression, who gets it in the neck? Poor people, voters of color, people who are weak and cannot challenge. It's the same game, but that is exactly what's happening. The Democratic Party is filthy with vote theft up and down the line. Yeah. An investigation is okay if it's about a candidate or a party, but when it comes, or a business, or maybe a, a, a group of businesses, but when it comes to the building blocks of America, the foundation, the actual framework and structure of our governmental system, the media takes a hands-off approach to that. So to ask, my question is, if you invalidate our voting system and say that's crooked, that's a building block of democracy. It's a building block of what America stands for. So what's the consequence then? Does everybody just decide, oh, well, <laughs> why bother? Or does someone have to ask the question as to whether this is, I mean, everybody asks this anyway, but, but it would really validate the premise that we really are not a democracy. We really, truly are an oligarchy. So is that? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. I know. You know, there's a know. line in a, a, a movie, um, uh, A Few Good Men, Jack Nicholson's on the stand, on the stand yeah. and he says, you can't handle the truth. Right. And the fact is that neither the media nor the, nor the public in this country can handle the truth that we are not a democracy, we are an oligarchy. And one thing you have to remember about vote theft and election theft, it's, a, it's the corporations, it's a corporate thing. And who it's not money? Democrat versus Republican. Or Repo You can't convince me that Ron Emanuel really got reelected in Chicago. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that for one minute. So, the, the Bob, and Bob and I are Greens, and we're, when we're asked why we're doing this, predominantly, of course, of way that's been Republicans stealing from Democrats. But it, it, will, it goes back and forth. And the bottom line you have to remember is, if the corporations, the corporate parties, these two parties are corporations, if they have the power to steal elections from each other, what do you think is going to happen when a Green or a third party person like Bernie Sanders, who really is in his own way a third party person, threatens 
the status quo threatens the corporate structure. They will band together. The Republicans and Democrats will no longer be separate parties. They will jump together and they will, you know, uh, uh, close the wall to make sure people like us don't win elections. That's what this is really about. And so, you know, you get in, you got right to the core of it. This is a corporate wall built against the public and built against democracy. And that's why election theft is such a threat to all of us. Well, I want to say one other thing. We learned about how, how local election fraud is. And the one great hope is that local activists can change what happens in their locality. And we heard it over and over at the left forum. We heard a woman who was in New York in a county there, and she said, we hand count every single paper ballot. Yeah, we run them through the OptiScanner too, <laughs> because that nobody wants to have only, well, some people do, but um, the only hand count thing didn't work so well when you were black in Mississippi. So there is some redundancy virtue that you have it going one way through the computer, and now <laughs> give them right to us with video cam security, and now we will count them. They always come out perfect in that county. No manipulator fucks with them. That's a deterrent locally. If we can get a paper ballot, if we can get security cameras on those as if it were money, if we then can count them all by hand and match a machine count if you want that too, that might be a good thing, redundancy then we can get it back. And that's a local effort. And screw the press. I'm so angry at this point. Screw them if they won't cover this. Rachel Maddow, call her producer, get us a letter. We gotta get on there. No, be a poll worker. Find out what the weaknesses are. Hold them to, uh, to account. And yeah, get the local press to say something because once you find out 46,000 provisionals weren't counted back in 2006 or 2004, then make that a stink and you'll wake up some people. And that is very quietly done. I must say it's as if you have a problem in your family and somebody is in, you know, alcoholic and going off the deep end. You surround them with love and you very quietly don't publicly shame Uncle Ted. But, you know, you quietly you take care of the problem or just, you know, mitigate it so that he's not driving anybody around to school. So that's what we got to do locally. And God bless Bernie that he does have this national attention on the fact that he's challenging the establishment and both parties do it. And I want to say one other thing about third and fourth parties. Under our current system, fraction magic, I get very nervous about all these other party efforts. Why? Because it just gives you more buckets for the fractions. And it passes the smell test a little easier. Oh, they had so many greens in that precinct. Or that's an, an all due love to what the greens have done. But I'm just saying under fraction magic, we have to be careful going that a third party can solve our problems. Because right now, it cannot. We are under fraction magic, and it is fraud capacity. And until we are counting all our paper ballots, we are vulnerable, and we got to worry about that first thing. Go out, be active, make sure we get a good vote count. And we can do this. Hand-counted paper ballots. Yeah.